Hi, Dan explains. Uh, this is the first video. I'm going to do a second video probably for you after I do the other two videos I'm supposed to do for the other lady. But I wanted to do this first video because you were talking about uh, Mayron Hollis and you didn't know that um, ectopic pregnancy, um, I mean, that it wasn't always life-threatening. Yes, of course, there are situations where someone is literally going to die if the pregnancy continues. Honestly, it seems like with many ectopic pregnancies, they don't usually last all the way till um, the end of the term, uh, end of uh, 40 weeks, you know. But there are some situations where they um, can definitely make it to a viable stage. You know, and to me, my thing is, I really think that doctors need to get into um, being able to provide care for children who are prematurely born even earlier than like 21 weeks. And, you know, there's a big issue with this. A lot of doctors refuse care for children who are 22, 23, and 21 weeks, especially 21 weeks, even though there is evidence that there are several children who have survived at 21 weeks. So, with that all in mind, that's why, to me, I do believe that we should do preterm births or early births for ectopic pregnancies. I also think that with ectopic pregnancies and other pregnancy complications, that there should be an option to give birth to children at earlier stages in the pregnancy and still provide care for them. So even like at 20 weeks or 19 weeks, there needs to be more research, in my opinion. Um, anyway, my point was, was in ectopic pregnancy, I was specifically talking about the story with um, Marin Hollis, where she was um, in Tennessee and she decided to get an abortion at, I believe, 12 weeks it was. Um, the story, I'll have the story in the link, um, so you can read the whole story, basically. But um, it basically was the day that um, Tennessee enacted their law where they specifically um, did not account for any exceptions for doctors to commit abortions on their uh, on unborn children, you know, and they still have that law in place, I believe. It's just kind of like they have to prove that there was clearly a life-threatening situation if they want to stave off being prosecuted. So they basically do not have much of a provision for the case of life, and I appreciate that because I don't think that there should be an exception in the case of life. I don't believe in any exceptions. That's just my personal perspective. But, yeah, with she had an ectopic pregnancy, specifically, and um, she had to actually end up giving birth at 26 weeks um, into her pregnancy. And she did lose a lot of blood. She did lose her fertility. But she's not dead today. She's alive. And so is her baby. Both she and her baby are alive. Yes, there are different complications, but both people are alive. You know, that was, to me, very important in the story. A lot of people try to act like the story was such a bad story. Where like, oh, they should have killed the kid and things would have been better. It makes no sense to me that people say, oh, if we would have killed one person, this whole complication would not have happened. But you killed somebody. Like, they're no longer alive. This way, both people are alive. Yes, there are complications, but they're both alive. And with modern medicine today, I feel like the, they can have their health restored back to normal, you know, in both people's cases, eventually, you know. So, to me, that's why it's very important to pay attention to the fact that a lady was denied an abortion for an ectopic pregnancy, and she did not die. Her baby did not die. Both people lived, and I feel like with complications with 
pregnancies that they specifically say will occur. I feel it's more so that they're saying like it's life threatening if you carry this pregnancy all the way to full term. But I don't understand who the heck is asking anyone to carry their pregnancy all the way to term. Like, I have no issue with preterm labor, early term births. I don't have any issue with that. I think that we just need to have more of the tools to provide care for children who are born very early, you know, but that doesn't mean that we have to kill anybody. Like, abortion is specifically killing somebody. Uh, Early term birth is not actually killing anybody. It's actually delivering them early because the pregnancy can no longer last. Like, if she dies, if she's going to die imminently, the pregnancy will no longer last anyway. So the baby will not be able to live, obviously, in a pregnancy where a mother is dead, obviously. So to me, it's like, for us pro-life people, we do care about the life of the mother and the child. We want both people to live in this pregnancy. And I think in life-threatening pregnancies, you can have the same mentality, basically. Just like in this situation where people say it's an ectopic pregnancy, you can die of blood loss and so forth. But at the end of the day, she survived. The baby survived. You know, there were complications to her fertility, but she's still alive. She's living. So you can't say it's a life-threatening pregnancy when nobody died. So anyway, that's all I have to say in this video. I just uh, will put a link below so you can watch it, read about it too. Um, And yeah, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Comment down below, guys. Have a great day.